This tutorial is on how to do chroma keying in DaVinci Resolve. For this footage we used AGS for a green background and three lights on myself, the key light, fill light and the hair light. AGS intensity was set to be just bright enough to offset the shadow cast by the key light. You can see that shadow to my right. The key light was set to about 50% and both fill and hair light to 25% intensity. There are two common ways to do chroma keying in DaVinci Resolve. One is to use this 3D keyer and the second is with the use of Fusion. My personal preference is to use the Fusion because it provides far superior result. Once the footage is loaded into the Edit tab, we can switch to Fusion. First, we have to add a couple of new nodes. To add a new node, press Shift plus Space on the keyboard and from the selected Tool option, type Noise and choose the Noise Reduction option, then click Add. All digital footage requires some level of denoising due to the nature of CMOS sensors. There are two types of noise reduction available, temporal and spatial. For this footage we will only use the temporal noise reduction. First we are going to zoom into the footage, into the area between the hair and the green screen. And from the options we are going to choose better. And we will also uncheck the Luma Chroma same threshold because we want to control Luma and Chroma threshold separately. We'll increase chroma threshold all the way to 100 and for this footage we will set luma threshold to 50%. This should give us a good balance between details, preservation and luma chroma denoising. We will not be using spatial noise reduction for this footage which is mostly used for an extremely noisy material. However, it will greatly reduce the level of details so use it with caution. Now let's add a new node. Click shift plus space on your keyboard and type sharp and then choose sharpen node. Obviously at first this is too much so we'll reduce the amount down to about 0.3. This should give us back some of the details lost in the denoising stage. Let's quickly rearrange the nodes to create some space. The next node we will be adding is named Delta Keyer. We will zoom out on the right side of the split screen and then we will drag and drop Delta Keyer node onto the left side of the split screen. Click the node, hold the mouse and drag and drop it onto the left side. To better observe the delta keyer substitution, we will change the left side from color to alpha. Next, we will select the picker and drag it over the green background and we will be moving around until the area around the head and the hair turns black. Don't worry if the pixels far from the head are not as dark, we will clean it up at a later stage with the clean plate. And so is next, we will be adding the clean plate. Click anywhere in the node section to deselect any active nodes and after pressing shift space type clean. To add a clean plate node. Now we will connect two nodes, noise reduction to the clean plate, then drag and drop clean plate into the left side of the split screen and choose color. From the clean plate option click on the picker and drag it over to the left side and pick anywhere on the green background. Zoom into the screen and we want to make sure that clean plate covers the body and the fine hair. To do that we will have to slightly erode until we get all that hair covered. After that we can zoom back out and we need to cover this hole that represents me by increasing the slider called Grow Edges. You can also click on Fill if Grow's Edges was not enough. Next we are adding the Blur node to smooth out the clean plate. Drag and drop Blur and then from the option increase the Blur slider until it looks smooth. In order to better see what clean plate does we will switch back to Delta Keyer by dropping it back to the left side of the viewer. And we will switch from color to alpha. Now we connect clean plate into the delta keyer. As you can see, our entire background now looks much better. What we are trying to achieve is that everything we are trying to substitute should be pure black. And everything we want to keep should be pure white. The hair is somewhat an exception and we are going to talk about it a bit later. Because the hair needs a bit of transparency. Therefore, some of it will be in the gray alpha. Now let's take a look at leftover imperfections that still need some cleanup. First we will add two more nodes. One is background, pick that icon and drag it to the node section and then select merge node icon and also drag it to the node section. Now connect background and the foreground into the merge node, then connect merge into the media out node. Let's zoom out a little bit and select the background node, change color to pure white. This gives us a better look into what we should adjust with the background. Zoom in and select the Delta Keyer node. To get rid of the leftover shadows, switch to Matte tab and adjust the low threshold until the background looks pure white. 
Next, zoom into the alpha and we want to adjust the high threshold so that the majority of the hair is no longer transparent. We will keep the outer portion of the hair in gray alpha to give it some transparency. If we reduce our high threshold too much, it will produce harsh edges in the hair. Now we are going to advance our footage a little forward to take a look at the hands. On the hands we can clearly see some fringes, which are caused by the bear in the digital camera. To reduce fringes we will slightly erode. We will revisit this tab later on when we do finer adjustments, but for now we are switching to the fringe tab. Here we will deal with the spill. Most common method used is well done, however I will use the burn method. Just be careful because it is very aggressive. I will only go halfway in spill suppression value. If you move it too far, the footage will turn red. But using burn will help further with the mask and the fringes. Let's make a bit more room, then select Delta Keyer, and we will add one more node called Matte Control. With Matte Control, we can further fine tune the Delta Keyer without modifying the Delta Keyer itself. We are going to slightly reduce the gamma value, which will further mask the fringes. Depending on the background, you'd have to judge which value up or down produces better results. After that, we switch to the Spill tab, choose Green, Spill Method Burned, and we're going to get another 0.5 to Spill Suppression. Add another node called Color Corrector. Because we have it positioned after Delta Keyer and Matte Control, we can now modify the foreground separately from the background. By default, DaVinci Resolve has this node set to affect both background and foreground, so what we need to do is to go to Color Corrector option and click on Pre-Divide Post Multiplier. Now any changes we do in the Color Corrector will only affect the foreground. So now we can go back to the Correction tab of the Color Corrector and play a little bit. For example, we can reduce the amount of lift to give it a, bit, a little bit more contrast. Also, if needed, slightly reduce the saturation. Zoom in into the left portion of the screen to the edge and then select Delta Keyer Node then select Matte Tap and give the edge a little bit of blur, just a touch. Because this is a white background, we want to add an illusion of light warp. First, we add a new node called Wireless Link. Click anywhere on the node section to deselect and then type Wire and select Wireless Link. Rename that node by clicking F2 and name it Foreground. And now duplicate this node with the Ctrl C, Ctrl V action and rename that node to Background. Click anywhere on the Nodes section and add another node called Bitmap. Copy-paste it and rearrange, then connect Foreground to Bitmap 1 and Bitmap 1.1. Click on Bitmap 1 and choose Invert. Click on Bitmap 1.1 and in the Paint mode select Multiply. Click on the Background node and let's add a new node called Luma Keyer and also another node called Blur. Now we slightly rearrange it and we want to assign foreground and background. Select foreground node and then from the left side of the node structure choose color corrector and drag this node into the input. Choose background node and then from the left portion of the node tree click and drag background 1 into the input. To see what it does, let's zoom out on the left side of the split screen and then drag and drop the bitmap 1.1 and you'll see those faint looking edges. To control, we select bitmap 1 and when we increase soft edges, the edges will grow in size. This represents the amount of light warping around the edges. To get rid of the warping effect at the bottom that has no edge, click on the image tab and then select frame as clipping mode. As you can see, the bottom warping is gone. Now let's connect this effect to the main output. First we need to introduce another merge node. Then connect bitmap 1.1 output into the blue triangle, which represents the mask. From the blur output, connect to the foreground, which is the green triangle. Depending on the background, you may want to adjust the blur amount to blur the amount of background that is spilled over the edges. Disconnect merge 1 from the media output 1 and connect it into merge 2 background input, which is the yellow triangle. And finally connect output from Merge 2 into the Media Out 1 input. To observe the effect, go to Bitmap 1, switch to Controls and move the soft edge. Use the value that best represents the light warp illusion. If we zoom out, we can see the edges of the AGS, so we can mask that using the garbage mat. Select the polygon icon, drag it anywhere into the node section, and draw a shape that covers area, not covered by the green screen. 
and then connect the output of the polygon into the delta here garbage mat input, which is a gray triangle. Now let's move on to the color tab in DaVinci. This is going to be our final stage. We want to add a couple of nodes to reduce the fringing effect in motion. Right click on the existing node, go to add node and choose add serial. From the library, look for motion and then drag and drop motion blur. For motion type, choose better. In motion range, choose large because we anticipate swift movements. Also, what I personally like to do is to add another serial node. We are looking for halation. We are going to slightly reduce its value, reduce strands down to 0.165 and spread down to zero. This will give a slightly glowing look to the skin. Let's see what it looks like now. It looks pretty nice. If you zoom in, we can notice that part of the fingers are not well defined. This is due to the loss of the information in the original footage. This is caused by the camera's inability to capture fast moving objects in general. Be mindful that when you record video in front of the green screen and there is a swift motion, the camera needs to run at the highest FPS and a high resolution in order to capture sufficient details. And here is the final post-processed footage.